Well guys, we're not machining today. Probably not for a couple of days. Let me show you what we got. Hey guys, yeah, I know it's been a while. <laughs> um, so anyways, we got a video here of rebuilding a, a 1978 Bronco, uh, Ford Bronco power steering box. It's the Ford box, not the, not the Saginaw box. I use both types. Um, we, uh, we blew a power steering hose about a, oh, three weeks ago, roughly. Replaced the hose and right afterwards started having issues. So, wasn't sure what happened. Uh, so, we're tearing into the box. We're going to put new seals in it at minimum and try to determine if we've got any other type of damage. So, anyways, uh, follow along. It's not our normal type of content, but uh, might be interesting. So, um, let's get started. So, I got to pull the steering box. I put a new power steering hose on. We blew the hose. Um, the, uh, I disassembled the pump because I had to drive like 30 miles with uh, no fluid. I kept stopping, adding more fluid. Um, and actually the pump looked like it was okay, uh, but man. I don't trust that I got it back together right, so I'm actually going to replace the pump. But uh, something's wrong with the steering box, and this has been a project that I've um, been meaning to do for a long time because it does have some a little bit of leakage. But uh, now uh, I've only got power steering in the right-hand direction and uh, Armstrong steering in the left-hand direction. So it's coming out. Um, you can see what I've done here. I've, I've When I pulled it in, I made sure I had the wheel dead center, wheel straight, so I've marked the top of the of the uh, steering shaft, I've marked the coupling, so I know the proper orientation to go back together. So now i got to get busy, i got to pull the lines off, drain it down, I'm gonna, I've got to pull the pump out just for clearance, and then, uh, then we've got to take the steering box out. That's yeah, going to be fun. Alright, we're making a bracket so that we can hold this to make it easier to work on. So here's the plan. I got a piece of tube steel stuck in the receiver mount here at the bench. I got a piece of angle. So time to weld. I cleaned off all the oil, grease, dirt, loose paint did some wire brushing because I don't want to get any contaminants inside this thing. So the first thing that we do is uh, we got to uh, pull out this sector shaft and it goes that way. <laughs> so we're gonna pop the top here and hopefully pull that shaft out. I'm gonna flip this around so that's on top. That looks pretty good. I was trying to figure out why the book wanted you to take this backlash adjusting lock nut off before you pull this out. And I don't think it really matters for pulling it out, but for putting it in it's going to matter. Um, but check this out. So this, this doesn't come apart, but if you turn, <laughs> if you turn the adjusting nut can you guys see that? This is going in and out. So this 
this stud is somehow mechanically li linked to this shaft. It's probably got some type of a snap ring keeper or whatever. So we've got to take this nut off before we get this all the way apart. I'm going to do that off camera. Okay. Well, this is interesting and also a little scary at the same time. So there's our adjusting um, <coughs> stud and it's got you can't see down there, but it, it almost looks like a valve. It's got a, you know, a flat round on the bottom. And then what they did, they put in a, um, like a shell nut, castellated shell nut, and they ran it down and until they got the right clearance. And then they came in and, and, and tack welded this. Um, this might have been the guy's first day on the job. It's a pretty ugly looking weld, but heck, it's held for 40 some years, so we're just going to leave it alone. But they, they did have a little dingleberry here. We're going to clean that up. Um, it did put a little tiny score in the bearing cap, um, but I don't think it's going to hurt anything. But we'll get in there and polish that a little bit. Uh, the gear teeth, they, I mean, you can still see the machining marks, and yeah, there's a little bit of um, shininess where they're, you know, where it makes contact, but really no wear, so this is perfectly serviceable, so that's good. And our seal surface needs cleaning, but um, looks, looks fine. Um, I didn't see any bearings. I think it's just all just, uh, you know, sleeve type contact in the bore. Um, not sure about the bottom yet. I really can't see down in there very well. We'll find out when we flip it over, but yeah, there you go. So pretty simple so far. Okay, I don't know what's going to happen here. I already got this loosened up. I mean, it's just uh, a couple light taps with a soft hammer and uh, She's coming. All right, let's uh, get a screwdriver in here. Ah, there we go. Okay, I don't want to lose <laughs> all the ball bearings. There we go. Okay, don't look too bad. Here's our piston ring. And that ring, <laughs> it's, it feels like it's below the surface. So, it probably wasn't doing a lot of sealing. Okay, let's go to the bench. So it was a little tricky getting this out of there because it, when it's hanging by the this housing, um, you know this is a this is a recirculating ball screw in here, it, and it turns so freely that it just it wants to unscrew. So you really got to hang on to it because you don't want those ball bearings going all over the place. All right, so there's a O-ring here. There's another O-ring. It's actually on over on the housing. So. The next step is we've got to take this cap cover off and dump all the balls out. <laughs> so I got a tray here, so hopefully we won't lose anything. So let me get that cover off and uh, bring you back for the fun. So there we go. So these screws were not very tight. That's a little scary. I think we'll definitely put a little Loctite on those when we go back together. Okay, so <laughs> the fun begins. Let's see here. Let's just... Yeah, we can just take that out of there. They're just going to go everywhere, so...
think the book said there was 27 of them. Obviously there's not 27 there. We're definitely going to count those. I don't see any more in there. Alright, so that's that. Alright, so... I've been reading up and watching some videos, so... There's a set screw. I think that might be it right there. Okay, yeah, there's the set screw down in there. And then there's this, this nut with these flats, okay? And we may have to make a special tool for that to reach in and get in there to, to unscrew this nut. Okay, so here's where we're at. So off camera, I got all the, uh, the roller balls out of there. There's 29 of them. Put them in a container so that we don't lose it. We'll probably end up just losing the whole container. Uh, okay, uh, we took our little set screw out. Uh, required a 332nd uh, hex key. So we got that out and we put it in there with our, with our roller balls. So now we're down to this nut, and let me uh, let me zoom you guys in here. There we go. So I put a little punch mark here that lines up with the set screw. Okay, so that'll give us a sanity check when we're going back together. Uh, there's a torque spec on this nut for the end play or the preload. Preload, sorry, not end play. Um, so we want to make sure we have that right. All right. So let me back you guys back off here. Um, I tried a pin spanner on this nut to see if I could uh, get it to move um, with you know with a fair amount of force, and it's not holding, and I don't I don't want to tap on it. So I'm gonna see if we can make a special tool to get to get in here to get this nut loose. Oh, let's, uh, I'm thinking about it. So the, so the worm thread down in here, it's interesting how they made, made this. I always like to try to analyze how things are made. So it's a cartridge and it screws in the back here. There's a, you can't see it, but there's a copper gasket underneath this nut, which I'm assuming is part of that cartridge. So that way they could make this separate and then just screw it in afterwards. So that's kind of interesting. Alrighty, let me uh, see what uh, we can come up with for a tool here. We're going to have to make something. So I just grabbed an old pipe nipple, took it over to the lathe, cleaned it up a little bit, faced the end off. So now we got to take it over to the bridge port and we'll We'll mill out, cut everything away, and we'll leave uh, four prongs on there. And then, I thought I could use this socket, but it's going to be a little short. But I, I've got some other sockets around. i just got to find an old one that I don't mind destroying. And we'll, after we get this made and we're sure that it fits, we'll just weld a, a socket onto the end. And hopefully it'll do the job. All right, here's my setup. I'm just gonna mill away. I just got a couple scribe lines on there. I don't think this has to be super precision. Um, I'll get the two um, in the Y direction here cut. Then I'll have to turn the part and try to uh, square it up the best I can. 
Um, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. All right, this is some pretty ugly fabric cobbling. <laughs> a couple of water pipes and a rod coupling to make a special socket. It is ugly. I hope DJ approves. <laughs> it only has to work twice, so that's uh, that was our uh, MO on that. All right, let's see what happens here. Whoa. Well, all right, let me get a breaker bar. Okay, we're going to try this type of a breaker bar so that we don't get so much twisting action. <clears throat> there we go. Well, that was a lot tighter than I thought it was going to be. Okay, well this is interesting. There's only one set screw right there, but I'm seeing another set screw mark here. Right there. So, this is the one that I marked. And there's the set screw indentation. And here is obviously another one. So somebody has been in here. Okay, well, that's got me a little worried. Okay. Okay, well, I don't see anything really out of the ordinary at first glance here. All the seals appear to be intact, although there was really no friction pulling it out. Okay. All right, I'll bring you back. Okay, guys, so I took a little break and uh, came back and cleaned things up a little bit. Uh, I got some coffee, <laughs> that helped, and uh, did a little more study and also read the uh, service manual some more. But um, so when this was all covered with, with uh, power steering fluid, this looked like it was threaded in here, but what this is, this is just a thrust block, so it's just a heavy washer plate, and you got a radial thrust bearing on each side, and then uh, this nut here is your preload, and it's a uh, it's been it's been staked in here, so the preload feels fine, the bearings feel fine, so we don't have to do anything there. So what that does, there's a flange inside the housing here, or, or, or ridge right here. So that sits on there, and then our nut clamps that in. So that's how that works, okay. So um, I was hoping to find some kind of damage that was causing our steering problem, and I haven't found anything. I've been looking this over pretty close. Um, I blew some, um, uh, um, spray through all these holes, some, some uh, spray oil, and blue air, everything's open, nothing came out, no metal, no dirt, anything like that. Okay, so everything seems to be clear. But what I did notice when I was taking it apart, the fit, okay, so there should be some pretty good drag on these, on these seal rings in the housing. And it just, I mean, it literally just falls right in, right? So those seals are definitely worn out, okay? So they're not doing anything, or at least not very much. So I think that's our problem. And, you know, and there may be one or two that 
are leaking more than the other. That's why it would work somewhat in one direction, but not in the other direction. So I think that's what we're going to go with. Uh, this is as far as you can go, as according to the service manual, as far as uh, uh, servicing one of these. Um, they don't. They say that nothing else is serviceable other than these uh, seal rings. Okay, and we're doing a little studying, and uh, uh, the way this works, uh, this is a coaxial shaft. So this is the input shaft from your steering wheel, and it goes through here. I think there's some kind of a mechanical limit so even though this isn't physically attached to the outer part I think there's some stops in there so it can only go so far but what it does as you see there there's a torsion rod that goes up through the center and it's pinned here on the end so when you turn your steering wheel as soon as, as, soon as you get some some uh, counteracting force from trying to turn the wheels it deflects, <clears throat> I don't know if it's a sleeve valve, there's some kind of valve in here. When, it, when, you, when, it, when that torsion rod twists a little bit, it deflects and diverts the, um, the power steering fluid, the high pressure fluid. High pressure fluid comes in the center area here and goes through these holes. And right now it's open to both sides. So, and, and one side of this valve and I think it's opposite. This one actually goes to the back side. This one goes to the front side of, of the piston here. Okay. So when you're just going straight ahead and you're not trying to turn, there's high pressure on both sides of the piston. Well, some pressure, let's put it that way. And then the, um, the return side, which is over here, is, is open to both of them. So the fluid is just flowing through. It's not really doing any work. But as soon as you, as soon as this thing starts to twist, one of these will close off and divert to the return side, and they're all already getting high pressure. So the the one that's not closing off still has high pressure, and then that drives the the piston and and you know eventually turns your wheels until the, until the tension is off again. Then it, then it re resumes bypass flow. So <laughs> I don't know if that made sense or not, but uh, that's, uh, that's my version of how it works. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go through, we got our, our rebuild kit here. This is like a universal kit. I think it covers several different steering boxes. Um, I'm going to go through and make sure that we've got everything we need, lay everything out, and then we'll work on uh, getting these replaced. There's actually a special tool you're supposed to have, a guide sleeve for uh, getting these on because they need to stretch a little bit. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is put them in boi boiling water or really hot water uh, to try to soften them a little bit. And uh, uh, I might try to make a guide sleeve out of a plastic bottle or something. I, I still got to figure out how I'm going to do that. But uh, got to be real, real careful that we don't damage those new ones. And then same procedure for this one here. This one, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't want to test fit it without because if I get that down in there, <laughs> I'd be able to get it out. But uh, I mean, this came right out also, and and I mean, this is sitting essentially flat or even a little below. <laughs> so there's there's no ceiling really happening here either, and there's there's an O-ring underneath here that's supposed to you know, provide extra tension. So. All right, so anyways, that's what we're going to do. We're going to work on um, getting ready to replace all these seals. Uh, we've got um, the uh, the lip seals in here to replace. There's a bearing in here, too. Um, and we got a new bearing in the kit. Um, so uh, we've got that to address, and the same thing on the main housing. We've got a couple seals over there. So, All right, let me get set up for doing that.